So in this video, we're going to talk about summations. And summations are very closely related to sequences. In fact, they are just where we add all of the terms of a sequence together. We use a capital sigma. Is the, this is the Greek letter that is represented by that shape. Lowercase sigma looks like that. And this functions very similarly to an integral. An integral sums up all the area under a continuous function. Here, we're using a discrete function. That's what a sequence is. It's the output of a discrete function. And the sigma, or the summation, adds up all of these discrete terms. So we start at the bottom, we have this lower limit. So k is what's known as the index term. And we, we're saying k starts at whatever this lower limit is. In this case, it's m. So I can say this is, we start at index m. And then here, we have our upper limit. And again, this should look very familiar to you from calculus, where you have an integral, where you have the lower limit and the upper limit. And this upper limit is going to be where we stop our summation. So this is going to be A of N. Right? So K is going to start at M and end at M or end at n, and everywhere in the middle, we're just going to sum all the terms together. So we have a of m plus 1. Remember, m is just a value, so maybe this is a of position 5, a of index 5. In the previous video, we saw that that's going to just have some value. Right? And then this is going to be a of m, m plus 1 plus a of m plus 2 plus all the way up to, I'm gonna do, we have a of n, and I wanna include the, the value right before n, which is gonna be a of n minus one. Right, so this is a summation. And again, we specify the lower limit is where we start, and we go until we reach the upper limit. And we include every term. This, each one of these is called a term. The terms corresponding to every index between the lower limit and the upper limit. So what's interesting is that this summation is actually very similar to a, a for loop in computer science. That's really what's going on here. So imagine we, we could write a for loop. I'm going to write this in Java. We might have double sum. It's going to be some variable that holds the sum. And this is only going to be relevant to you if you're familiar with Java or with computer programming. If not, you can ignore this. But for those of you who are familiar with programming, then hopefully this will help tie some of these concepts together. So we can have a for loop where we have a new loop variable k, and k starts at m. And we want to keep going as long as k is less than or equal to n. Now, with summations, we go up by 1 each time, right? If we look at this, this is m, then m plus 1, m plus 2, and so on, which means we're always going to have k plus plus. And then what we're doing is we're summing these all together, so we can say sum plus equals a of k. Again, this is using array notation. If you're not familiar with that, if you haven't had that yet, 
Don't worry about it. And then we can return the sum. So <clears throat> this sum, the summation, is really pretty identical to a for loop. A for loop has more flexibility because a for loop can change by what, what our step is. And the for loop can do more things than just sum values together. But other than that, these two are very closely related. Um, another important feature of that is, again, if you're familiar with programming, this variable k is a loop variable. It's defined in the loop, and that means its scope is the loop, and it is only available inside the loop. If I tried to look at k outside of the loop, my program wouldn't compile because k is local to the loop. Similarly, this k in our sum is a summation variable. And that means it's not available outside of our sum. It's only lo it's local to the sum, just like a loop variable. So we can go through and we can solve one of these. Our previous examples had variables for our lower bound and our upper bound, but now we have numbers. So we can solve this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to walk through. We're going to say, look at i. i starts at 0. So this is going to start at 0 squared. Plus, now remember i goes up by 1 each time. So now i is 1. We plug that into our formula here. It's going to be 1 squared. And we're going to keep doing this as long as i is less than or equal to 4. And then we stop. So we can fill in these values. This is going to be 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16. And if you were to add those all up, you would get that this equals 30. Right. So just like a definite integral, this is a definite sum, and it sums to a value. It has an answer. Let's do another one. So here, this one's a little bit more complicated, but we still have our summation variable i, and now we start that at 3 and we go to 5. And I'm going to plug in those values everywhere I see i in the explicit formula here. So this is going to be 3 plus 2 over 3, because again we start i at 3, plus 4 plus 2 over 4, plus 5 plus 2 over 5, and then we stop because we reached our upper limit. And if you work this out, this one's actually a bit of a pain. We have 5 thirds plus 6 fourths plus 7 fifths. And after a lot of unpleasant algebra, you're going to find that this is 4 and 17 thirtieths. But I will leave that algebra up to you. But again, this definite summation has an answer, a numerical answer. Now, if you've done a little bit of programming before, you've probably run across recursion. recursion. Recursion is this notion of defining things in terms of themselves. So here we can re define a summation in terms of another summation, a smaller summation. So what I can do is I'm going to grab most of this, but not all. So notice I'm leaving this last term off. And so I have a slightly smaller sequence here that I want to add together. And I can write this. Now look, again, we're still using k as our variable. We still start at m. But now we're going to n minus 1. And we've got a of k. So what I can do is I can rewrite this whole summation
is equal to the sum, the smaller sum plus this last term. And again, remember now k is that summation variable, so it's not available outside of our sum. Instead, we're using um, a of n. So this is this is called the expansion of the sum. And as we're going to see in later videos, it's always a really good idea to expand a sum when you're trying to work with it. And we can expand this sum. And now I can define this sum in terms of a slightly smaller sum, which is why I call this a recursive definition. And we go down all the way until k equals m to m of a of k is just going to equal a of m. It's going to be sort of our base case to our recursive definition.